everybody. Please be seated. And a very warm welcome to you this morning on what is a really cold and dark and miserable spring morning, isn't it really? So, um, well done for coming out in this horrible weather and getting here this morning. Uh, hello to everybody at home. Thank you for joining us. And also, if you're joining us at some later date on Facebook or YouTube or um, the website, we welcome you all here. And it's the fifth Sunday of Easter and a service of Holy Communion. Let's begin our worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God claims us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us the light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please stand if that's comfortable for you. And we're going to sing for our first hymn, In Christ Alone. It's number 32 in the blue book, and the words will also be on the screen. Please be seated as we prepare to make our confession to God. 
Lord, direct our thoughts, teach us to pray, lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by your spirit and may you bring you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand if that's comfortable for you, and we're going to say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for today, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. And our first reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasure of the Kandaki, which means the Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The spirit told Philip, Go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? 
and he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you're able. And our second hymn this morning is Faithful One. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Gail, get a second reading. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. I was trying to remember what the hymn was. <laughs> The second reading is taken from the first book of John, chapter 4. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar, for whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you're able for our second hymn this morning, which is Faithful One.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ <coughs> according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. And our reading this morning is taken from chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, did anybody watch the London Marathon last Sunday? Did anybody watch it? Hmm? <laughs> I watched it because I knew two people that were running it. My niece was running, and also somebody called Harry, who was in the con- uh, congregation at St. Thomas's. And the remarkable thing about Harry is that he's 86 years old, and this is his 21st London Marathon, which is absolutely fantastic. But I am ashamed to say that when I looked at his statistics, his average pace throughout that 26-mile marathon was faster than my pace over three miles. I was ashamed. But I do know the reason. He is so fit and so able to do that, because he practices. He runs past my house nearly every day, well, every other day, every other day as a routine. And it's practice that has got him into that state of fitness. So well done, Harry. And there's a lot of focus these days on taking care of ourselves. There's books, television programs, YouTube videos, smartphone apps, all aimed at helping us improve our physical fitness and our mental health. And I'm sure most of us have our own strategies for giving ourselves a boost if we're feeling a bit down or tired or worried. For me, it's listening to music or climbing to the top of one of the beautiful hills around our town. And of course, there's always chocolate. But there are some things around that we know are good for us that will make us feel better, but they require a little bit more self-discipline like Harry. Eating healthily, no chocolate. Getting enough sleep, making time for relaxation, exercising regularly, and so on. So looking after ourselves is important, caring for for our physical and mental health. But what about our spiritual well-being? How many of us spend as much time thinking about how we care for our spirituality as we do about our bodies and our minds? And it's our spiritual health that Jesus is focusing on in this morning's Gospel reading. The passage is taken from the final conversation that Jesus had with his disciples before his crucifixion. It took place in Jerusalem on the evening of the Last Supper. Jesus has washed his disciples' feet. Judas has already left the room with the intention of betraying Jesus to the authorities. And Jesus is spending the few precious hours he has left with the remaining 11 disciples, trying to prepare them for what is about to happen. He's telling them, that when he's no longer with them in person, they'll need to continue to nurture their spirituality. 
and he's trying to reassure them that although he won't be physically present with them anymore, he will remain connected to them spiritually and will help them to keep their faith alive. And to illustrate this, Jesus uses the analogy of a vine and its branches. He is the vine and his disciples are the branches. God is the gardener, lovingly tending the plant so that it grows strong and healthy and eventually bears fruit that is luscious and life-giving. And we, the disciples, the followers of Jesus, will be kept intimately connected with God through him. Jesus tells his disciples to abide in me as I abide in you. That word has been translated from the Greek as abide in this particular version, but it can also be taken to mean a stay or stand firm, to persevere when the going gets tough. So Jesus is telling his disciples that when he returns to the Father, they must stick with him, that they must continue to follow his teachings. Otherwise their faith just like the branch that has been cut off the vine, will wither and die. And if we abide in Jesus, if we stay connected to him and follow his example, he will nourish us with his love so that our faith will develop. It will flourish and it will grow like a branch on a healthy vine and we will produce the fruit that Jesus speaks of. So how can we abide in Jesus? What does that mean? Just as we choose to be intentional about looking after our mental and physical health, maybe we should be trying to do the same with our spirituality. Making Jesus a priority in our everyday lives is vital to our spiritual well-being. And how we achieve this will vary for each one of us. It might be through prayer, worship, meditation, reading the Bible, or social action, whatever works for us as individuals. But as branches on the vine that is Jesus, our faith is constantly being nourished. And being connected as branches on the vine also illustrates the importance of being connected to one another. This is one of Jesus' two commands to us, to love one another. And coming here every Sunday morning, coming together with other people who share the same beliefs, praying and praising God together, really recharges my spiritual batteries and sets me up for the week ahead. But we're all different, and there's no right or wrong way of cultivating our spiritual well-being. The most important thing is to consciously make time and space for Jesus in our busy lives. Through abiding in Jesus, by following his example, Jesus tells us that we will bear much fruit, and in his letter to the Galatians, St. Paul describes the quality of this fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness. However, these qualities that will develop in us through the nourishment of God's love aren't meant to be kept to ourselves. Jesus wants these qualities to be shared, to be used for the good of others. He wants more and more people to experience the joy of his love. And this is exactly what Philip is doing in our extract from Acts. After Jesus' death, Philip is extremely successful in spreading the good news about him. But just at the height of his success, the Holy Spirit calls Philip away into the desert. Probably not a choice he would have made for himself. But the Holy Spirit has called Philip away for a purpose. The Spirit directs him towards a chariot in which a man, an Ethiopian eunuch, an outsider, someone from a different country holding a different set of beliefs, is sitting reading aloud to himself. From the book of the prophet Isaiah. Philip recognizes the Ethiopian as an outsider who's longing to come in. He comes up to him and asks him about what he's reading. And the Ethiopian responds by asking Philip to explain to him the meaning of Isaiah's words. The two men talk together and eventually the Ethiopian asks Philip to baptize him, which he does, and the Ethiopian continues his journey full of joy. Philip is certainly a fruitful branch on Jesus' vine. And here at St. John's and St. Thomas's, as we look forward with the aims of growing our two churches and taking the word of God out into our communities, we will need to be fruitful branches, just like Philip. Nurturing our spiritual well-being, strengthening our relationship with God, 
will help us to recognize when the Holy Spirit's drawing us towards people who haven't yet heard the good news. Good spiritual health will help us to come alongside others from different backgrounds, cultures, and contexts to be able to meet them wherever they might be and share God's word with them. So let's think about how we might bring the joy of God's love to others through our everyday encounters, our conversations and our actions. Who knows how we might connect and engage with those who've not yet heard about God's love for us all? Who knows what fruit we'll produce? And let's ask ourselves, are we spiritually ready for the challenge? Amen. Thank you, Linda. Let's now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the affirmation with faith we have in front of us. Please stand. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, Christ died, died for, for our, our sins, sins in, in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. Please be seated. As we continue in prayer, the response at the end of each prayer today will be, I will say, Lord, as you abide in us, please can you respond, may we abide in you. Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. God of love, may we abide in your presence and so abide in your love. So as we freely receive your love, let us freely share it with others. Let's share everything that you have given us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. Father of all, we pray for your church, that it may be a caring, loving, and accepting church. We pray for the outreach of your church, that it may seek out the needy, the outcasts, and the rejected, that love may be revealed in action. Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. We come with sorrow for all who have been denied freedom or peace. We pray for places where communities have been destroyed, where families have been divided or separated, for children who have lost contact with their parents. We remember all who seek to heal that which divides. Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. We give thanks for areas where people can exercise their talents, where people are free to think and to act without hindrance. We pray for all who are enriching our world with their gifts. We pray for our families and our friends. Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. We think of all those whose lives have been marred by their past, for lives destroyed by bad memories, hatred, guilt or resentment for all who are weary of life, who are tired of serving others. In the power of the risen Lord, we ask for renewal, refreshment, and restoration. We pray for all those who are sick, in mind, body, or spirit, and ask that they might feel your healing touch upon them. We pray particularly today for Paul Coveney, Sylvia Burgess, Margaret Nadin, Rosemary Richardson, Roy and Karen, Lauren and David Harrison. Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. Lord of life and love, we praise you for all who have borne fruit in your service, for all who have helped to grow your kingdom here on earth, for all who have shared their love and goodness. We pray especially for Sylvia's daughter, Linda, who died suddenly last Sunday. We pray for all her family. May they feel your comfort. We pray for all our loved ones who have left this life. And in a moment of quiet, we lift before you those for whom we grieve.
Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are able, would you please stand? The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share that peace here and also share the peace with those who are on the camera. Yeah. Peace be with you. So now we come to sing number 329, in Christ there is no east or west. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. 
for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to meet your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to the table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus bless you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood shed for all the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again, is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to be with you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and be yours forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Revealing in God's new creation, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink. In remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in His way, to rejoice in His truth, and to share His risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us to heaven. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, 
so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I hand over to a church warden. You can fight between you who has the privilege. There aren't actually many notices this week at all, other than the fact it's cameo on Friday. I think that, that is the main one, unless anybody has got anything else you'd like to say. Have you got an announcement to make I have. as well? And I'm sorry I'm not with you for the next two weeks. I'm on two different guiding things. So you all have to get on with it. <laughs> get on with it! <laughs> we hold divine service. But Gail would like us all to be involved with that. Uh, we had our APCM the other day. So would the church wardens and PCC members please stand? Okay. These lovely people are responsible for what happens along with me in particular as the priest in charge the vicar but they are responsible for the governance and for leading of our church and this is a really important ministry so just have a look at them because they are the people you can talk to over coffee when you think you know <laughs> like this to happen or you don't like that to happen they're the folks to talk to they represent you okay there are others as well so let's bow our heads and pray shall we remain standing the PCC members Heavenly Father we thank you for all your people the gifts laid out the ministries entitled and Lord each in our own way have those ministries but we pray now for our church wardens and our PCC members thank you for faithful service in the past and bless them Lord for the year ahead that they may serve you in this role Father we pray it in Christ's name Amen Thank you very much. We did have a PCC secretary, but he's just disappeared. <laughs> Is he watching on the... I don't know. Oh, he's probably spared us. He's probably sitting with his legs up. He's sitting with his legs up since Lawrence had his operation. So we're going to come now to our final hymn. Teach me to dance and SJS 67. Sorry, and all sorry. those... Are you not going to announce that we've got our new person to start? To oh, start? bless you, sister. <laughs> right, so let's start again, shall we? Far, far, far more important. Yes, I would like to announce we have our new families worker starting this week. Her name is Andrea Fitton. Uh, she's been in children's work in other churches before, and uh, she will have an impact, I hope, in the, in the year ahead. It's not going to be like, boom, everything's going to change overnight, but we're starting to build... And we need to build slowly but strongly. So I've got real hopes. Now, the danger is when you appoint a families worker, an eco families worker, you suddenly say, oh, good, that person can then go off and do it. She will need a team. Now, there's already in this church a good, we have a messy church. We have sunbeams, our toddler groups. There are things to work on and build. But we want to do so much more. So I ask that you please pray for her. You'll be meeting her next Sunday, which I hope she's going to be here and we'll interview her and we'll talk a bit and you have a chance to meet her over coffee. And also, I hope that maybe people will think about being part of a teamwork that will be around to support her, because if we're going to develop new things as well, we need backup. One person can't do it all. So really pleased that Andrea is starting on Wednesday. Linda and I are excited and we've got a plan and we've got a sort of a, 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 an induction plan for her as well, all being everything's been sorted out so this could be a very significant moment in the life of our church so we just pray for them heavenly father we thank you for andrew's call to come to this church with saint thomas's lord bless her as she begins this new ministry and lord help us all to see our part in the role we will have in letting young people and children and families know the love of god for each one of them in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Church Warden. Is there anything else I forgot? I don't think so. <laughs> you want to forget? No, no, okay, that's fine. <coughs> so we come now to our final number 67 Teach Me to Dance. Dance to the beat 
teach me to move the rhythm the power. Thank you. 